And we're back. I don't know what the deal is with that, but whatever. Excellent connection. We are back. Sorry about the interruption, but kind of got to take care of that. So now, the, the finishing up of this soak span job came out real nice. I thought there was going to be more bugaboos but there's not there's one right here but I'll show you how to fix this it's right here where I tore it there's some wrinkles that ain't no big deal the uh, water and dope is still is pretty dry right now so we'll just take some sandpaper that's 180 don't want to go that go that much That's 320. I'll take a 320 here. It's right here. I'll knock them wrinkles off. I mean, you wouldn't even really have to patch it, but I'm going to. around and sand out all the wrinkles. Cut that out. So I'm teaching control line in Chile. <laughs> That's good. Okay, I got that cut out. I'll hang on the dope here until I get these. Until I get these uh, little wrinkles sanded out. Now you got to be careful. Because there ain't enough soap to really sand on it, so light touch. I'm just trying to get rid of the wrinkles. I'm not trying to reshape anything. The type of shaping is long gone. Let's get ready to bumble. Well, that came out real good, so I don't have to worry about that. I get too excited. <laughs> There is, you know, it does shrink a little. It doesn't shrink, it goes back to its original position.
Okay, so we got that. out so we're doing good it's, uh, it'll be fine one thing I didn't talk about when I laid this wing out is that the lead outs are one quarter inch under the center line uh, I think 500 If you include all the half A's I built in the hobby shop, I would say 500. Because when we had the hobby shop, I used to sit on a, a glass display case and build airplanes and then we'd go fly them in the parking lot and I'd probably build two or three little Satans at a time, a couple of jumping beans at a time and that, that went on all week long. When I was a kid, back before I knew about the correct paint, I used tester model airplane, I mean, model car paint. And that shit would just come, <laughs> just run off the airplane when you get 25% nitro on it. Then Tom Warden taught me about dope. Bill Noyes, I used to go spy on him. Now, these, these gentlemen were fine builders, I mean super fine builders. Well, it's all the guys from the 60s. Bill Granderson was part of that crew that I, that I came out of. He was at Woody and Earl's at the time. I think I think anybody could build a super nice airplane if you take your time and you correct all the buggers. I, I just get them. I, don't know, I get tired of them. This one here, I'm going to take a little more time because I got so many airplanes now that you know I got I've got uh, one, two three, four airplanes here and two airplanes in Dayton that have been flown in the Nats. So I don't need another Nats airplane. Oh no, I forgot this one. Situations from the land down under where fiberglass flightless birds try to fly. Oh, yeah. get them ostrich chickens. I rode an ostrich once. Use a broom handle to steer them. Me and Danny Napolitano tried to ride cows. They didn't like that. <laughs> cows don't like to be ridden. Oh, 
Okay, so what are we going to do here? Are we going to do something with this? Yeah, we better. Yeah, I can see a little bit of a little bit of wood through the silk span, so we'll just put a little patch on it. Oop, moving it around. See, what people don't understand is dope is plastic. Okay. So we'll leave that there. Let's go around the edges. Then we'll wait for that to dry. Then I'll cut. Then I'll do the whole wing. Go around where I sanded it up. I don't have much dope here. I, I probably got enough for a coat or two, but I need to get the flaps covered. Be honest with you, I didn't think I was going to do that this this weekend, but I might as well take advantage of being where I can do it. I can do I do it over John's, but it's rather difficult. I got to pack up all my stuff, drive for a half an hour to go do it. Then, you know, so it's ruining an hour. It wastes an hour a day. Don't get me wrong, I like going over there, but. I don't understand why well, here in St. Louis I can get to any place in the city in 15 minutes. If, if John lived in St. Louis, I'd get to his house in 15 minutes, but it takes me a half an hour to go 15 miles. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Okay. We have a question, and the question is, how many coats of dope have you applied at this stage? I have uh, five coats of dope on the wood. Five coats of 60-40 thinned dope on the wood, sanded with 600 between each coat. Then the tissue's down, and now this is the second coat on the wood, so that's seven. But that doesn't include all this. We're going to, this will get three coats. Because the wood you can sand. The wooded areas and the center sections are difficult. So, if you want the lightest finish, it's three coats of dope. First coat, 100%. Second coat, 50-50 on the wood. Apply the silk span. Three coats, 50-50. You, you only get one quart of paint. So you got to... You can use all the thinner you want, but you only get one quart of clear. Unless you're Kenny Stevens, then you get a gallon. <laughs> Shit. One quart. So the coat, the coats really don't matter. 
it's it's how much thinner's in it, you know. You could put a hundred coats on it if it was a hundred percent thinner, and it wouldn't matter. See, this is going to be an issue, I think. Let's put a little dope on it and see if it comes back to. Uh, Should be okay. After I get this on, I'm going to move on to the flaps. And then we got the stabilizer to do. We'll get it all done today. All the, all the tissue. Then the airplane will go together. Do that over John's house, put the airplane together. If I went on a marathon, I could probably do it here, but Okay, wait a minute and flip it over and do the other side. There's no dope in the center, no dope on the cap strips yet. We want to make sure that this thing is laid down perfect. So far, this is one of the better wings that I've done. It, I mean, it's really flat. I took my time in date and I didn't hack through it. Because like I say, I'm in no rush. I don't need a Nats airplane. This is my next year's Nats airplane, but if it flies good. It should be okay if it comes out light. And it looks like it might. Thirty, twenty-two, and seven. Thirty, uh, twenty-two, twenty, twenty-nine, thirty. Should be under fifty-nine ounces. I don't think we're at thirty yet. But we'll see when we get this covered and weighed up where we're going to come in. I start losing interest in, in them like my Thunderbolt when I know it's going to be over 60. It just it ain't worth it. Wasting your time. However, somebody would love to have that Thunderbolt. I know for a fact. It's just not what I'm looking for. You think about it, I got 16 airplanes here. Is that right? Let me see here. Let me count them up. One, we won't count this. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, I have 16. I have 16 total. Oh, I forgot this one. Or did I? One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten here. There's ten here. Ten. Ten. And I got, uh, now I have 15 airplanes total. And if I got 1500 bucks a piece on the conservative end for them, that's 30 grand. 15, oh, clear. 1500, 15, no, 225. 15 airplanes times 1500, that's conservative. About twenty three thousand bucks. <clears throat> Some of them I wouldn't sell for fifteen hundred bucks. No way. You can't replace you can't replace the engine. <laughs> Almost, I can flip it over. It's gonna be smooth as a baby's bottom. Good enough. I already went around the perimeter on that. Ooh, I better get, better get after this. It's pulling. Even coats on both sides, or else it'll warp. Now I'm going to let you in on a secret on warps. show you yeah that'll come right back okay you got a wing that's warped like this which side do you paint to get it to unwarp this side or this side I'll give you a clue what side do you, would you think this side it'll straighten right out Pretty good, pretty good. Be very aware of that. <coughs> it looks like they're getting more and more. What are you talking about? 
And you're incorrect, Richard. You want to paint the side that's warped up. It relaxes it, and it'll go back down. You can't pull it. You can only relax it. aside and do some flaps. Yeah, set it over here out of the way so I don't break it. So, I'm going to have to use this. I keep looking at my trash can, but I put it over here. Board, we're going to do that side. So I got these all sanded with 600. They're smooth as a baby's butt. What happens is, remember you can only relax it, you can't pull it. So if you got a warp like this and you say paint the bottom, it's going to warp some more because it's going to relax the bottom and, and warp. So what you need to do is paint the top and relax the top to allow the bottom to pull it straight. Took me a while to grasp that too. Anybody, anybody ordering Brodak Silkspan, don't follow this. It says best use dry over a frame. No, that ain't right. Burr! Pulling out wrinkles as you work from root to tip. You'll never get them out. Put a layer of glue. You don't want to use any glue anywhere. Is 
Then it says to wet after after you get it on there. No, I put it, the way I do it is the easiest, fastest, most painless way to do it. So don't follow them to instructions from Rodak. six dollars a sheet I want to definitely take care of it of course I, I bought Japanese tissue that was fifteen dollars a sheet come on get in there to warm up here. Okay, let's put this back on the hook. Get out of the way. I don't need it just yet. Okay, same goes for the uh, flaps. You want to use the shiny side up. Which is this side. And I'll 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 show you I'll show you on these flaps exactly what I'm talking about because it's gonna they're gonna work. But they'll be laser straight when I'm done. Because I use the joke the dope to adjust the warp. So don't get too excited when warps happen. This, this is how to get out of them. And as John says, you know, I make mistakes, but because of the experience that I have, I have a million ways to get out of the mistake. And hopefully I pass that on to you guys because there's not really any mistakes. Nothing's catastrophe. It's all, you know. First off, it's not a watch. Second off, it's just a you know, it's just a model airplane. It's only wood. Ain't no big deal. Okay, I'm not gonna put any more dope on this. I'm just gonna push it through. What the hell's going on here? There we go. Now we're going to put a coat of dope on this, dope it down real good, rub it in, let it set, and it'll be warped to beat hell, and it'll be warped this way. Because it's pulling.
piece of dirt under there. What's that? One down. We're going for the marathon here. Why is it not spraying right? Get all the wrinkles out. I mean, even if you don't, it's not a big catastrophe. You just block sand it off after you get some dope on it. But it makes life a lot easier if you get all the wrinkles out. All the air bubbles. You do every step of the process to the best of your ability. It works out a lot better. I mean, there's absolutely nothing to this. It just takes practice. Okay, this is warped this way, like I said. And in order to get it to straighten out, we're going to have to paint on the underside of the warp. Let me cut this off so you can see it. Because it will be pronounced. I'm just... I'm cutting this for speed. I guess I tear, tear, tear the back half. Oh, now we can sand it again. We'll sand over the bondo. <laughs> Bando the bando. That's two coats. You got to keep track of the coats too because if you put an odd amount of coats on things in the sun, they'll warp. But they will be laser straight when I'm done. There's not a big rush in this, but you need to get the hump on. Can't dilly dally. You don't want the wood to take a set.
Okay, this, this flap was laser straight when I started. You have to take my word for that because I don't have a picture of it, but it's worked now and it's worked badly. So using the theory that I just explained to you, we're going to straighten it out. Okay, when I mean warped, let's see, we want to go to that camera. You see how, how it's dished like this? So you wouldn't paint this side to get it to, to straighten out. You have to paint this side. And you relax this side to go back to the other side. You cannot pull wood. You have to relax it. So. This one here is not quite as bad. I didn't put as much shit on it, but it's okay. Okay. Let's see here. Our cover is much faster. Yeah, it is. Looks like something in that water. Yeah. Windex. I use Windex because it's out al there's alcohol in it and it dries faster. But plain water will work. Already relaxing. Already relaxing. So we'll get this out of the way. Matter of fact, it'll go back the other way. A little and then you have to adjust the coats of dope to get it to straighten up you know what let's sand it this is the bottom side so not much matter Now, Ronald Tool, you search that name, he was a six, 62 or 3 Youth Air State champ. And they had some nice airplanes back then. He told me that I would end up not using tissue anywhere on the wood. That'll never happen. I, I don't like that grain showing through. But if you left the tissue off, it probably would be slightly lighter.
I just don't think the trade-off is worth it. And I now know what he meant by frosting out. And to give credit where credit's due, my hinges actually, I mean, I don't know. My hinges came from an idea that Ron had 20 years later. <laughs> it just came to me while I was watching TV. Hey, I know what he, what he meant. So there's nothing new. If you think you're keeping a secret, you're not. This is all about sweat equity. Everything's been done. Molded wood come molded wood comes from the 30s. So that ain't nothing new. I got a, I was looking through my shit. I got Al Rabe's original Bearcats and uh, molds and he was Nice enough to mold a skin and put it on there. And someday I'll get around to building that bear cat. When I come come here and it'll be something to look at. It it won't be nothing fun to fly for me anyway. But they are cool looking. Okay, we are bowed up again this way. So in order to make it straighten out, you got to paint this side. So that's that's how I know that I was right, because it will be straight. Let's see what we got here. Glass cloth and epoxy. Ted Winterman here in St. Louis builds a super nice airplane and he uses hobby epoxy. If you use fiberglass, whatever you put on stays on. It's heavy. And to use epoxy, the same thing. But Ted, he uses silk as his base he covers the whole airplane with silk and rubs in petted hobby epoxy i don't know if it's petted anymore but hobby epoxy block sands it and then shoots a coat over the top of that now it's a very utilitary finish there's not, nothing super high gloss about it but they're respectable you know nice finish Okay, let's, uh, let's put this other piece on it. So we powered right through the, the wing. Had two hours and that about two hours to do the whole wing. Maybe two and a half, I don't know. I'll be I'll be good at this at the end of this model and I won't do it again for a year. <laughs> I 
set. Almost straight. No, almost. When this dries, it'll be straight. I don't know yet. We'll see what happens. Any questions on covering? Shit, any questions on anything? Don't ask me about global warming, you don't want to hear that. Okay. Yep. Back there. Now we got a bunch of crappy ends all around. We just go around it with dope, dope them down. It's almost straight again. And we'll adjust the straightness with uh, dope. me I know of what I speak but the only thing I know is model airplanes and Harley Davidson
And shit, I forgot <clears throat> what Harley Davidson is all about. Got some good memories though. Just about straight. We'll let that dry up for a second. Work on this one. It's almost straight. Almost. Oh yeah. This is this is silk span. Estrega Arc. Okay, let's let's go with this. I cover everything of mine with double lot free flight, lightest silk span I can get. People think that it's that it's too light, it, it, you know, it offers no puncture resistance. Well, you can't drop a screwdriver through it. The strength comes from the paint. It doesn't come from the tissue. That's the first thing. Now, if you're flying your Strega in grass, and you're going to have sticks flying up or whatever, I'd go with polyspin, but it comes with a two ounce penalty. But polyspin is by far a hundred times more durable. I'm not a plastic film guy, so I'm not ever going to say or cover or 
monocoat or anything like that. But if you're going to do it and you're going to take care of your airplane and not let anybody handle it that doesn't know how to handle the damn thing and you're not you're not you're flying on pavement I'd go with lightweight silk span that's what I use but you have to be careful you can't be dropping don't have your phone in your pocket and have <laughs> dropping the phone through the wing the only problem that I did have and this happened when Charles flew my, wasn't Charles's fault, but Charles was flying my Junar. When we went to put it away, I had it sitting on the bottom in my car on a rack. I set the rack on the ground at the Nats, and the, and the uh, parking lot is gravel. And part of the black tape picked up a rock off the the parking lot when I set the rack over the top of the airplane a three-quarter inch piece of rock went right through the wing that was the only mishap we had with that airplane that I loaned Charles I did it had that have been polyspan it would have just bounced off but because I used this lightweight tissue it just went Boom, right on through. You can't expect more than that. I mean, what are you going to do? All right, do we want to cover? We can do the rudder with that piece and the elevator stabilizer with that. A fuselage can't be done until its airplanes put together. And I might use carbon on that anyway. So, let's do the rudder. And then... I better lay it down. I don't, want, I don't want it accidentally flipping off there. Okay, so this is the outboard side. I don't have any. I don't have any uh, dope on this, so we're not gonna be able to do that right now. We're just dope it. We'll get some dope. Well, I got about that much in the bottom of this can, about an inch and a half, so I don't know how much doping I'm going to be able to do, because I'm out of clear here in St. Louis. I was going to make a run to Wicks, but I don't think I'm going to. John wanted me to pick up some Superfill, but shit, that's a hundred miles for me. 50 there and 50 back. And with the price of gas, we ain't going for it. Okay, let's see where we're at here. Okay, it's still hooped in this direction. This way, so we're going to paint this side.
Yeah, about run it straight. <laughs> oh, too far. Went back the other way. Now let's paint this side and let it dry standing up. Okay, what are we here? This side is a bit. Just a little. Okay, this is bent this way. We're going to paint the inside of it. And it's cut, uh, contrary to what you think, but <clears throat> trust me, I know of what I speak. You think, well, shit, that's going to bend worse. Nope. Paint this side, I'll stand it up. And yes, all this shit matters. Got a good flying airplane, everything's gotta be straight. It's gotta be straight. Now, I don't build three ounce flaps like Al Rabe did. My, these are only half ounce. It'll probably be an ounce finish. Ounce a piece. Painted. Ready to go on the airplane. But they started out a half. So we'll stand it up here. Let's see how this one turned out. Yep. Straight. Now the nice thing, we're, this is about getting ready to go to spray paint now instead of brush. Probably get one more sand out, one more coat of dope, and then it'll go spray. I'm continually looking for ways to make the finish lighter. Because the single heaviest thing besides the engine on the airplane is the paint. And you wouldn't think so, but 
Trust me, that's what it is. And there's some guys that really lay the paint on. Sixteen ounce finish. God. That's almost a sin. <laughs> Sixteen ounces. When I lived in Eugene, Oregon, there was a guy on the forum that I know. I flew with Morris Gilbert and Gerald Champ. And Gerald was into Wendy's. And Gerald had a red oriental. Man, was it gorgeous. But I'd hate to think what it weighed. I don't remember what it weighed. It, it was... I said, how much clear you got on a gallon? And guys try to tell you that a gallon of dope weighs one ounce. Don't believe it. <laughs> Do not believe it. You can't sand enough paint off of it for it to be one ounce. So we got them done. So basically, I'm kind of wrapped up for the clear that I got left. I, I only have that much in the bottom of this can. Probably enough for one coat, possibly two coats on the open base. So we're not going to have enough to do the elevator stabilizer. So what am I going to do? I guess I could look in my scrap crap and see if I got any orange I could add to it. Except that's going to be white. I really need white back there. I already added the white that I had here. I don't think I have anything left in the car. Usually I carry around dope in the car. But I think I've taken it all out. And I added it to a... I added the white that I had in the car to a quart of clear that I had here. But this dope here is rather old. If you look, it's separated. There's the there's the clear on the bottom, and there's the white that I put in. Now, even if you shake it up, it's congealed. Yeah, that's not going to work. It just won't mix back together. So I don't I don't dare put that on the airplane. You know, it might work, but boy, it's your... It'd be a chance. I might do a little research and see if I can use it. Or I could shake it. Shake it up and... I know. I know. I forgot all about this. Imagine that. I bought that this just for this case. I've never used it. Let's see if it works.
we'll see if it works. If it works, we'll use that paint. If not, read the directions. It says power adapter, blah, blah, blah. Introduction, what does it say? Important. Set the knob to the left. It's to the left. Connect with the power adapter. We'll do that. Twelve volts out. So. We're going high tech now. Okie dokie. Mwah! Science project. If it don't work, I didn't lose anything. I, I had it here. Take the little pill, put it in there. It's wide open, it don't work. Let me see if I can get it going. Pretty thick stuff. Maybe if I put it in some plastic. Okay. I can't tell what kind of thinner that is. I need to get that pill out of there. Don't work with the shit. Man. 
There we go. There we go. There it is. Okay. How about that? Right there. Well, I may not have got the whole quart, but I'll have that much extra anyway. So we, we reconstituted some of it. And I'll try this on the rudder. I think it'll be fine. It's stirring away in there. I'll let it run for five minutes. I got a shaker too. <clears throat> Test it out. See if it screws up. <laughs> I only have this to. I think it's going to be alright though. Remember, I told you I'm an experimenter. You know, I still got some. This, I'll go get it after I get this coat on it. And I'll show you some paint. That, that shouldn't exist. Let's see how this works. Perfect. I knew it'd be okay.
I don't know whether you can get this paint anymore that I'm going to show you. I don't use it anymore. I used to I used to uh, paint the noses of my airplanes with urethane. This is the paint that I used to paint my 07 Thunderbolt with. It's urethane. But I'm going to explain something to you about this paint. It's really odd. And I would not be afraid to use this if I had it if I want to use this stuff. This is Acme Finish 1. Now, to have a can of this is not surprising and still have liquid. You know, it's still, you can hear that it's still good. But to have the activator that's still good is amazing. Because normally when you crack the lid on this, it's nitrogen filled when you crack the lid on this, if you don't use it within two weeks, you throw this out. This is like 30 bucks for this, or it was at the time, 30 bucks for this can. This is Acme Finish 1 FH611. This is 10 years old. Matter of fact, more than that. It's a 2007. The last time I used the, uh, 2006. It's 15... Let's see, is that 14 years? I don't know. 6 from 22 is what? F yeah, 15 years. It's 15 years old, and it's still good. That's, that's unheard of. I think they've changed the formula, so when you crack it now, it goes bad. So that, that's what a scam that is. I bought that at Sherman Williams. I still got the pill in it. Yeah, I'm gonna use that. I wouldn't be I'm not afraid to use that. That that'll be fine. I'm gonna stir it some more though. Just been sitting under the bench for five years six years It won't do wide open. <laughs> Stop stirring. Ah, damn, too much. Well, I do three quarter throttle in that thickness stuff there. It turned out nice. Not quite dry enough to sand yet, but close. Something there. So I got some place to work. I still need to make a gear door. Damn, what the hell is all these blades doing out there?
The mad scientist. Yo. That little thing wasn't very, very expensive. It was about 20 bucks. I got this by accident when I was making teeth. I needed, I needed a, a vibrator to, uh, to vibrate the plaster. And that's what I thought this was, but it's not. It was a stirrer, so I... Doesn't real do real good with thick liquid, but we got it to work somehow. This feels all right. Let's go ahead and go put some tissue on. This is the outboard. We want to do the inboard side first. dope on this but I'm gonna try to cheat. It's a test piece so we'll see how it goes. Oh shoot, I didn't wet it down. Oh well. Oh well. It wound okay. Now, when something screws up, I'll look back at this video and go, hey, that's what I did. I used that crap dope. I think it's going to be okay because it feels right, it looks right. That first bit that I poured in there was good thinner, so. Yeah, this is a good shot. Only difference between my shop and John's shop is I don't have a mill. I have a lathe, but it's in the garage. And he has a nice, he has a nicer 
workbench, it's bigger. Yeah, glad I did that. That worked good. You know, if I take the pill out, it may stir that other can. Nah, I don't want to get greedy. I get greedy, something's bound to screw up. But if this works, I'll absolutely be able to say that Yep, you can bring dope back from the dead. Now I got a quart. I have a quart of Brodac clear. Not, not crystal clear, regular clear. That's brown. Hi, Bobby. And I don't believe brown dope would work. I don't believe I could bring it back. I believe there's something there's something in Brodak dope that ain't right. They're adding some proprietary ingredient that just don't make it right. Makes it smell funky. So that's what makes it theirs. So I'll just stick with Randolph. I had a, a, a gallon of dope John and I have already used up that was 50 years old. And it worked perfect. The can looked like it was World War I. <laughs> yep, I think this will be fine. It looks perfect. I might have an issue with this, now that I think about it. Maybe not. Maybe not. I'll see what happens.
Let's see. How long have we been on? So four hours. That's what it took to cover so far. I've been covering two hours on the last video and almost two hours on this one. I don't know if this was a good idea or not. I didn't have enough dope on the rudder. All I can do is hope. Tell you what I'm going to do before I go too far. I'm going to get a few coats of dope on this. Before I glue the rudder on, I'm going to put tape on it and see if the paper pulls up. I didn't have enough dope on that. So, You know, if I screw this up, it don't ten minutes. I can make a new one. But can't do can't do a wing in ten minutes. So you better have your shit together on that. <laughs> Oh, I gotta quit monkeying with it. Let it dry. See what happens. But that taint did come back. I mean, so that's a good thing. Yeah, I know, John. I'm going to I'm going to test it before I go any farther. Put some tape on it and then pull it off and see if the paper comes up. That is frustrating for you guys who who build airplanes and know what I'm talking about. 
Got your airplane completely done. It looks beautiful. You start laying the tape on it and you spray it and that, that looks beautiful. And then you start taking the tape off and it rips the paper right up. And that comes from not having enough dope under the paper. And I, I didn't have enough dope under this. Got too excited. So we'll see what happens. Might rub some thinner in it or something to get it to sink. I know the wing's going to be okay because I had five coats on it. When in doubt, do a experiment. Got plenty of time. This, this is the last, one of the last pieces to go on the airplane, so. could do. I could paint any trim on it before I glue it on the airplane. Okay, let's let that go. I need to get that pill out of there so I don't forget it. Pretty neat little apparatus here. Let's see if it works with no. See how it works?
I just noticed something. If it, it's laying like this, it spins faster. Put it back in the box for future use. Put it in there. Don't worry about it. I'm building a watch. I don't like that pill on top of it though. Ain't enough room in the box. So the pill is going to have to go down there. They didn't want to waste not one millimeter of room in the box. So that worked. Check out the wing. It's been drying for a while now. See, we're ready to sand and cut and whatever. It feels good. Like John says, I won't know until I put some tape on it and try to rip it off. that so we're good there I don't know if we're gonna dope anymore or not well, definitely gonna sand sando sando Hey John, did you get your wing covered? Let's see what it weighs. Now this wing can weigh up to 50 or yeah, 16 ounces finished. That when I mean finished, I mean with the paint on it. So it's got to be 
a bunch lighter than 16 with no paint on it. Yeah, that worked good. And the reason I say that, if you go back and look at Paul Taylor's channel, you can see Wendy Ertnowski with, uh, Vi I think it was Viper 8, was looking at my airplane under the Pagoda, and it was a 48-ounce PA-65 airplane. And when I crashed that airplane, I took the wing out, and it weighed 16 ounces, but it had the paint on it. It was finished, 100%. But the airplane was 48 ounces. Not quite as big as this, but come on, get on there. There we go. We're going to have to doctor that up. There it is. Tomorrow. Okay. Inboard. Anxious to see how much weight it gained with paper and dope. Probably an ounce. Maybe a little more. Get your guesses in on how much it gained with paper and dope. Come on, get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Feels pretty good. Get your guess in how many how much did it gain? Whew. 
nothing. Is that 10 or 7? No, 7. Yep, it gained 1 ounce. So, we're doing good. 1 ounce. Come out nice. It come out real good. I don't have any spots that I can't live with. Now it's a matter of Sanding this thing before it gets another coat of dope, and then it's a full coat of dope, and then sand it, and then a full coat of dope, and then sand it. It's not real nice. <laughs> I love it when things work out. Yep, I think you're right, John. I think the 600 is the way to go. I used, like I say, I used to only sand down to 320. And my finishes are okay, but there's a lot of work at the end. I think this is going to make things life a lot easier. Two oh seven. I probably could stand with three twenty right now. I just don't happen to have any. It's all back in day. So we just have to bear through it with 600. Three twenty would make it a lot faster and then come back, but got a low spot right there. Gonna have to smoothie some stuff in it.
So acro green. That's okay. What am I doing? Sanding. Well, I wish I had some 320. A small piece right here. Quick with 320, get the big boogers off, and then come back to the 600. I'm happy with this. I'm real happy with this. This is probably one of my better pieces. Yep, we're going through the yellow again. Have a boot tube.
Okay. I'll take some work there. But we're not afraid to work. It gives a 320 to knock the big boogers off, then come back with the 600. Otherwise, I'll be standing for a week. You guys see that? Change hands and gain a stroke. What happened was there was a little booger on top of the uh, cap strip. It would have been a lump there, so I just sanded through the tissue and I just put a little patch on it. Never see it. And here, which one is it? This one needs to get stuck down. Got it. 
I'll go over all them cap strips with some dope. You gonna make be able to make the sub sixties, John? I sure hope I can make sub sixty with this. I'll give these cap strips about three coats. There's another thing that I don't normally do, but because I want a super nice finish on this, we'll do the cap strips and then I'll come back and do the open base. A little extra paint on the cap strips. Only paint where I need it. And I got to tell you guys, hitting that sub-60 mark on a piped airplane is super hard. Super hard. With the wood we got today, damn near impossible. I don't even think my Junar 56... It's 56 ounces with a super tiger in it, but you start adding the pipe and the tank, you know, the extra fuel, the header, the engine's an ounce heavier, it'd probably be 62. Ain't, ain't no way around it.
I might go back and put chapters in, in this video so that people can find shit. Or maybe the other video, I don't know. Sixteen likes. That's good. Nine what ninety-eight views though. And only sixteen likes. What the hell is going on? Give her the, give her the big, not the middle finger, the big, <laughs> the big finger. That's why there's a dip in it. Uh, it'll be easy to get out with acro. Shit. The dip in the sheeting right there. We'll fix her up. On this side too. I have to go all the way across. What the hell was I thinking? Shape. Uh oh, what's that? Just water. Just a water spot. Gluing it down to the cap strips now. Came out better than I thought. So I'm doing good. Doing good.
getting tired, you guys. Okay. Go around that perimeter, I guess. That's about as far as I'm going to go on this setting. So I need to get some clear on the stabilizer and elevators so we can uh, cover them tomorrow. But I don't think I want to rush it like I did the rudder. I really, I really pushed the rudder. Looks nice, but I'm not sure that it's going to hold up to the tape test. I'm not sure if she's going to hold up to the tape test. At least if something happens to the rudder, we'll have a historical <laughs> document of what happened. Using crap paint, not prepping it right. It might be okay though. Sure feels nice. Probably going to be in about the nine gram range now. We'll check it here in a second. Oh, 
I'm gonna have to get my scale recalibrated 10 grams. Put the good stuff on it now. Missed by a gram. Well, I think I'm going to call it uh, quits. We might be back on later this evening after dinner. One hundred and six views with seventeen likes. That should be a hundred and hundred and six likes with seventeen views. six hours in on this today. Six days work in one day. Couldn't find my cheap brush, so I'm using a high dollar sign painter's brush <laughs> to do this. Single stroke, one inch. Good brush, it's, it's held up. I might have to take off the, the paint off this though. coat this after it dries on the other side all right guys thanks for watching appreciate the super chat in the uh video before from uh chili all right we'll be back later fairwinds tight lines see ya